welcome back to another game runner video. This is going to be the final card reveal video, finally, of set four. And uh, it's a little bit of a big one, and there's a lot to talk about. So let's just go ahead and jump right in with, uh, I think, we will begin with the biggest heavy hitter. I'm not going to bullshit around. This is probably the best card in the game. Let's talk about it. So this is a level three Wonderverse unit. This is Space King Arthur Adriano. So this is like a fusion. Um, I'm sure the lore is going to be really fun. And uh, you can look forward to a video discussing all of that uh, in the relatively near future, probably in a month or so. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, this is a superhero and a robotic counter. Choose one of the following. Either if you have five or less life left, gear up into this. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, or heal one life. So let's let's just stop right there immediately, okay? Um, heal one life means this is just a generically very powerful CNT, right? Like, it's it's like a heal. It's it's like, you know, it's like it counters two damage because you're healing one as well as doing a normal CNT thing. Uh, gearing up as a CNT is completely broken. Um, just to reiterate, if you are not sure why, um, what happens is you gear up. Uh, into the unit and any remaining damage that was to be dealt is now nullified you do not take that damage anymore because your ruler is like yeah you can you can think of it as like losing target on the damage kind of um basically it's just like a game rule that's not like necessarily specifically good reason but like you know you can imagine it as well the armor comes on so you're not there anymore um basically you lose target so if you are dealt, hypothetically, three damage through a ruler attack, your first damage check is this, you gear up into it, that two remaining damage, you're not dealt it, uh, and you just immediately go into this and suddenly you're a six HP body. So um, all of that is to say that is very clearly very powerful, okay? So that's enough reasons alone on a 663 body where I'd be like, this is probably worth playing. It didn't have to say, it didn't have to do anything else, it really didn't. Um, however, uh, you can also gear up into it from hand, um, and you completely ignore effect damage uh, as a gear ability. The one downside to this card is at the end of the next turn after you gear up into this, so if you gear up during your turn from hand, for example, then it will go at the end of your opponent's turn, when it's probably going to be dead anyway, so not really a big deal. But if you gear up into it as a counter check on your opponent's turn, you get to keep it for your turn. So really not a massive deal. Um, that's really the only downside. Uh, like, I really need to emphasize this is one of... The, I think I genuinely, truly think this is the best card in the game. In terms of generic utility, like, there is not a single deck that's not playing this. You can make an argument that Trickster might not want to max copies of it. I would say that's a silly argument because it's good no matter what. So unless your counter space is so tight that you cannot afford to splash this ridiculously powerful generic tool in, um, yeah, I see no reason why you wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't play this in literally everything. It's uh, absolutely cracked. Um, and on top of that, <laughs> if you're playing this in attribute, then it's even better. So... Yeah, this is a very, very powerful card. Actually, I suppose it doesn't really matter so much that it's a superhero, outside of the fact that you can obviously play eight counter equip or counter gear up cards in that deck, which is silly, uh, and probably goes some way as to why the deck is so powerful, despite um, not necessarily having the highest unit quality on the whole, or, like doing the most interesting things, but like if you're constantly dodging damage, <laughs> then, you know, it's going to be good. Okay, next, we've got Yu, Yu Mao, the Turnover Demon. This is another very powerful card. Um, so this is a supernatural willpower superhero level 2443. So you're not losing anything if you gear up into this because there is no gear requirement. So literally every ruler benefits from this besides Berserker. Um, the gear ability is the counter of damage that this deals becomes send this to the graveyard. So you nullify your opponent's counter effects in the sense that they still counter, but they do nothing. Uh, and if you gear up into this from Drive, yeah, to drive one more. Why not? Um, yeah, I. Uh, this is a very powerful card. Um, now, that that being said, it's not that broken, right? Like, realistically, this is going to stop one effect, right? Like, in most rulers, this isn't buffing that ruler. Uh, you're still doing the same amount of damage. Uh, you're still probably going to have the same amount of attack. This might be nice in, like, you know, um, the, the hand-based rulers without four attack. This is obviously going to be nice in those for those stats. Um, and, of course, you get that defensive uh, power, so... It's good in those senses, but this is not anything special uh, from, from that point of view. Um, and, the, and the ability there, whilst nice, uh, it's only really going to be doing, like, one thing. Uh, you know, you, you're kind of dodging that one CNT. So, obviously, that's that's not to uh, downplay that this is, like, a very good card, and especially in Drive Rulers, this is very, very good. Um, but I did see a lot of people losing their shit on Twitter about this, and I don't think it's losing... I, I think... <laughs> I think this card is worth losing your shit over. This is definitively the best card in the game, in my opinion. Um, we'll see how well that ages, but I I think this is the new uh, run the format card. Um, so, yeah. On to the next card, Alice Through the Looking Glass. This is the final Alice. Uh, turns out it's a secret only. There is no uh, main set printing of it, which sucks. 
is not that big a deal because it's one per case uh, in England. Well, it's one secret per case, and there's two secrets. So we'll talk about the next one in a second. So you have a fifty percent chance of getting this, and each Alice deck will only ever run one. So. It's, it's certainly not great, uh, but remember, English tends to reprint these things as promos very quickly, so it's probably, realistically, it's going to be money-gated for about two months, and then you'll get it. Uh, and let's not pretend like there's only tournaments, so that doesn't matter anyway. Um, this is a level 1, 2, 2, 2. Sorry, 2 strike, nice. Uh, Alice, A7. A7. Ascendant. So, uh, yeah, you're able to get this back from your drop zone, you're able to get some top checks. Uh, obviously, you, you can... Um, any of that A7 synergies is, is going to be relevant. Uh, legend, so you can only play obviously the one and it takes up your legend slot. Standard action, remove this from the game. Uh, choose an Alice in your graveyard and special summon it. Simple, effective, uh, the best of the best effect texts usually are. So this is um, at its worst just uh, getting you a level 2 Alice um, for one cost, which is obviously very strong. Uh, and at its best, it's getting the level 3 Alice for any one cost, which is obviously very good. Uh, weaknesses here, just Sky Strike really. Um, you can't, but Alice already like is countered by Sky Strike. Um, though, of course, I think a lot of the meta is... Uh, the yellow is, I, I think, falling off fairly hard um, in terms of prevalency uh, going into set four. Like, I think I think blue is where it's at uh, very much, and then, you know, red and pink are really, really good. Yellow is, like, fine. Uh, might age poorly, we'll see. Um, so I don't think that's a massive deal, but yeah. The staple, one of an Alice, and garbage and everything else. Uh, this is the other secret, and it is just bad. Uh, good art, but a uh, bad card. I'm not going to bother talking about it, because it's just not good. I suppose the... Okay, I will say the attributes on it. It's like it's vanilla, the attributes on it. But, like, it's a legend. Like, are you really using your legend spot on this? No, you're not. You're not. Next, we've got Hitchhiking Through the Galaxy. This is a level 1 technology and sightseeing. So, keep 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 track of uh, that sightseeing attribute. Uh, so, instant action. Choose one of the following. Reveal one Wonderverse non-legendary unit of level 2 or less without CNT from your deck and put it on top of your deck. Okay, so it stacks something, but you have to have a way to get to it, uh, and you can't stack uh, something that's going to counter. Or choose an allied unit of level 2 or less and put it to an empty allied zone. So uh, basically just dodge something. Um, that is only going to be good if they're attacking the side, if they're attacking the defensive unit. Well, if you move it out of the way, then, you know... Um, well, sorry, if, uh, if they're attacking the center unit and you have nothing there, then you can move something into block, but if they're, you're moving something out of the defensive zone, then you're face tanking the damage, and that's never good, so... Um, yeah, I don't think this is anything particularly good. Uh, there might be some random deck that's built around it, but I, yeah, I don't think this is inherently very strong. Next, Under the Abyss. This is the one <laughs> new Abyss Summon target. <laughs> L for Darkness. Um, so this is a Wonderverse card. Uh, Deathshade, Dragon, Darkness. So, you know, a suite of very good uh, attributes there. 5, 6, 3. 6 HP, very nice there. Dodging those Lucifers. Uh, you must... So the requirement for the Abyssal Concerto is 5 Darknesses, including at least a level 0, a level 1, a level 2, and a level 3. So... Hefty cost there, what are we getting? When this is special summon, until the end of the turn, this gains ignore CNT for any damage that steals to your opponent. So this is just gonna deal three damage. The problem is there is so much interaction in the game at this point, uh, in terms of, well, you know, so much in the sense that like your opponent is going to have a way to just block this one attack, right? Like, you know, uh, and it only gets it for the turn. It's not like a permanent ability. Uh, so you can't just slam this down. It'd just be like a really, really scary beat stick, um, which I mean, you know, fair enough. Um, like, I, but yeah, I just, I just don't think this is very good, and I don't think Darkness is probably rushing to play. Now, I will say, obviously, when this is special summons, so here's the thing, right? Their dragon is, you know, has a card called Azlea, um, and remember that this is something with butterfly effect that you can just swap into if you have another level 3 out, and in that sense, this suddenly becomes a lot better. So, I think if you're looking at this from a Darkness perspective, you're probably going to be disappointed, and if you're looking at this from a Deathshade perspective, <laughs> well, you're playing Deathshade. Uh, but if you look at this from a Dragon perspective, there is something to be said for this. Next, we've got Recruiter of the Holy Sword. The boy is back! Um, so, uh, <laughs> this is a 2-1-1 level 1. Key figure, interesting, Warrior Dungeon Space Peeps. So, I I'm very excited to see the lore on all of these. Uh, the counter uses this card's ability, TD and OD. Choose one of the following. Either DR4 to special summon a warrior unit of level 1 or lower from your deck. Okay, so it's like a rotor, but kind of bad. Or choose a card from your damage zone and put it in the bottom of your deck. Then put the top card of your deck in the damage zone, so CNT does not activate. So um, this is, like, it's an effect if you really need to get something to happen. Um, you really need to organise something a certain way. I just don't think this is particularly good. Like, I, nothing, you know, like, I... Like, I, this definitely feels like more of a in-world lore card than it doing something, like, thematic to what's happening in the lore, <laughs> as opposed to anything else. Like, obviously, you can see um, Space like space Recruiter here is just rushing off with Excalibur to give it to, um, I think, Yamada, right? Um, so, 
you know, uh, I find uh, nothing special, I think. Next we've got Kirik of the Relentless Sword. This is a level 0, 2, 1, 1, pretty mid stats. Uh, and when it's normal summoned, you do destroy all level 0 or lower units in the column as a normal summon. So obviously this is one of those cards where, well, the problem is firstly it's an OD unit. So uh, it's not even like you can you like <laughs> you can TD it. So it's one of those things where the format is just going to have to line up where like drive decks are anti-meta and the meta is loads of level 0s. And I, I just, maybe in like four years, this will be really, really good <laughs> when like we've power crept to the point of level zeros being the entire game. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Next, Space Hero Sun Grip. Um, I won't make the joke. Right. Uh, this is a level two, four, four, one willpower. Superhero, Future Folk, Ragon Leaf, stacked attributes. Um, <laughs> uh, it has two abilities. Uh, once per turn, Sigron. Uh, you put it on the bottom of your deck and you special summon up to two Dragon Leaf units where they combine level of one or less. So if this was a combined level of two or less, this would be kind of broken. Um, level one or less, it seems kind of useless. Uh, there's not many good level one Dragon Leafs, and um, the ones that do exist are like TDs or something. So, um, you know, that seems kind of whatever. Uh, but then it also has Energy Reverse as a D uh, standard action DR2 to ready one of your resources. So, um, you know, if that was an instant action, it would be a bit better because you could do it on your opponent's turn as well and maybe do some shenanigans there. I am... Um, like, I don't know that this is nuts, necessarily. Like, I'm trying to figure out... Like, I no synergy comes to my mind where I go, damn, that's crazy. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, please educate me in the comment section. Maybe after testing this will become way better, but I'm just struggling to figure out why this is a 4-star. Because um, certainly, you know, there are... You know, look, there are there are plenty of Regan Leafs, okay? And you can see the quality of my internet, by the way. Look, look at... I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to bother. Let's move on. Um, next, we have got Dark Harpy. Uh, <laughs> this was one of the first revealed artworks and a central piece of the archetype. This is a supernatural wind death shade beast. Cool, great attributes. Four, two, one. Cool, decent stat line. Counter, pop a set. I, I mean, Jesus Christ. Like, am I seriously going to be using a counter spot on this thing? This is garbage. What? <laughs> this sucks. This is not good. Um, Jesus is not good. Okay, next. Mountain is blue. Water is clean. My hometown. Is this a haiku? I feel like this is a haiku. Uh, Yomaj in front. Uh, I, we knew that. It's red. <laughs> Sightseeing historic uh, counter. So, if you have two or less life, you heal two life. So obviously that is very, very powerful, particularly in uh, Trickster, because you can just hold it in your hand until it's really good and then just go heal two. Um, standard action. Remove any number of sightseeing cards from your graveyard. Draw one card for each card removed with this effect. So, yes, hypothetically speaking, you could draw 19 from this card. Like, you could draw a silly amount from this card, hypothetically. The problem is, the only good CNT is, like, with sightseeing is, like, Space Cave, and, like, this, maybe. Um, you know, none of them are particularly good. Uh, a lot of them, uh, like, some, some of them are, like, uh, Foul Dragon Temple is, like, a field, so it's never going to be able to be removed. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things. Now, the one thing, if it was ever possible to give, in the future, to give your drop zone a certain attribute then this could be really spicy but i look it's just i wouldn't even bother for now like i i, I just let this card exit your mind next we got cat mashigura uh, this is a deity tactics technology business so tactics and technology matter um it's counter to plays it uh, you choose a cat sith or a card with familiar in your graveyard and you special summon it um this like i i get what they're trying to do i i get it uh i it, <laughs> There is a there's a Volnar version of this card that is way better and uh, just actually going to see play and this is not not a good card. Next, Roller Dash, uh, standard action. Choose an allied unit against defender and retaliate until the end of your opponent's turn and defend your opponent's no little, 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 <laughs> till the end of your opponent's next turn. This is a level zero and it's a martial skill and a tactics. So um, look, you get the synergies there. Robotics for tactics, martial skill is that meme deck. Uh, <laughs> Maybe it'll be good this set. It won't, it won't, it won't be good. Let's not even, let's not even pretend. Let's not even cope. Let's move on. Strike of the Holy Sword. Very cool card here. Uh, so this is a level one event, martial skill and sword techniques. Obviously, uh, martial skill there. And you can see in the artwork, oh, what's that? Oh, there's bloody Excalibur that is. Um, so that's cool. Uh, you can set this. If set, if you are geared up, you can play it at any time, but you can also play it directly from your hand. So that's when you're going to do it. Uh, reveal the top four cards of your opponent's deck. Put one card from among them on top of your opponent's deck and put the remaining cards on the bottom of your opponent's deck in any order. Then, burn one. Uh, so obviously, this is uh, a really interesting card. Um, now, the potential to just stack four of these is kind of silly, uh, which would be really, really funny. Um, if you had, like, Mortana, so you could DR2 to make, like, a bunch of them free, and then it would be possible. Uh, but, like, 
Mainly, this is kind of silly because you get to just look at them and go like, well, I don't want you getting that counter. I don't want you getting that counter. And I quite like it if you damage check this, actually. So, I... I will say, okay, I stand by um, two paths being a really cracked card. The problem is, uh, the best decks in the format actually just can't afford to play it. Uh, like, it's just taking up space that they really need to be spending elsewhere. Um, like, Trickster Burn is kind of the only real deck that could afford to play it. Uh, so, I, I, you know, this is not taking up counter space anymore. Uh, but there's a lot of really good cards in this game. And, like, you're kind of going to have to build around this card. Uh, and, you know, if there was ever a yellow burn deck, like, I'm sure this would slot right in. But, you know, the pieces aren't really there for that. So, I don't know. This feels like a card that you might just splash in. Um, but, I will say, it's possible that Warrior Marshall Skilly deck will get better in set 5. And we'll see what happens with that. Next, we've got Right of Slashing Through. This is um, instant action. Choose an allied unit. It gains plus four attack until the end of the turn. It's a willpower and a martial skill. So, um, this has potential to be a bit crazy with cards that have um, intercept. Uh, but, like, I mean, the, you'll notice that keyword has disappeared <laughs> since set one. Uh, I, haven't, I don't think a single card has been printed with it. Um, but, you know, plus four attack on an intercepting unit is a bit scary. Uh, your opponent just might not be able to out it, <laughs> which is obviously quite funny. Um, it, it, you know, I, I, it's okay. Yep, it's a martial skill. Fine. I, this might be good. This might be good. I feel like it's just going to be format dependent. Like if there's a lot of really, really big things in defensive units, then this is going to be in defensive zones. It's going to be really, really strong. Um, or if there's just a lot of times you really need to, to I don't know. I, it could be okay. It could be okay. Next, hide and seek. Uh, I'm not even going to bother reading this one. It's just not very good. Uh, like it's some weird event darkness like thing uh and you can maybe steal like low cost units and you can like do one of the effects of sky strike but like at standard action time yeah it's just not good uh next slime body zombie now here is a good card this is a death shade zombie level one three two two uh you can gear up into it no gear requirement and super spreader <laughs> Uh, at the end of this card's attack, you may put this into your graveyard. If you do, look at the top card of your deck and special summon it if it is a zombie. Put the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck. So, I actually don't know that you'd ever, uh, that you all would frequently want to do that, to be honest. Um, but, you know, that's giving you that extra aggro potential. Um, and, you know, failing that, like, it's, it's like you just slam it on top of your ruler. Um, you know, if you're playing wizard, hypothetically, for example, like, you're not, you're not really losing anything, you're only gaining. Uh, and you just gain a free little defensive body there to, that your friend's gonna have to beat through. Um, and you, like, it, yeah, it just seems good. Like, I don't know, it just seems good. I, I think this is good. I think this is a really nice in a, zomb in a zombie deck, um, where you can potentially bring out something very large, um, that is, you know, way better. Uh, the, 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 the problem is like, it, I wish I said play it if it was a zombie, because I guess there could be some fun, like, things with zombie events. I don't know if there are any, but like, if there were, that could be fun. Like, it, it you know, it, look, I think you played this in zombies. <laughs> I don't think it's going to make the deck, like, good. Uh, but... There's a lot of good zombies now, so the deck might be good. Really need to try it out, but um, yeah. Next we've got uh, Katan Momen. Uh, this is a Supernatural Cloth Beast 330. Uh, OD, put it to graveyard, choose an enemy unit. It loses all abilities until the start of the next turn. That could be quite good. I'm pretty sure this will not, like, <laughs> suddenly make a geared up unit just disappear. Um, that would be a bit weird. That would be a bit crazy if it did. Uh, I mean, it's an OD card, like... Uh, yeah, yeah. Come on, like OD has to like yeah, it's 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 not it's not that good. Like it's it's cool, but like I don't think it's really crazy. This card, on the other hand, is a bit bit mad. So this is a level zero two one two. So two strike level zero warrior future folk dragon leaf. So let's just you know those are all very good attributes. Um, and future folk is certainly something to like keep an eye on. Like I, I think I, I'm pretty confident that deck will be good. Uh, this like there's a lot like there's a lot of really good future folks at this point. Uh, two strike on a Regan Leaf, which you can Sigrun into, so you guarantee that damage. Uh, TD and OD use the ability, and the ability, when this card enters place through Sigron, but obviously and TD and OD, uh, choose one card in your opponent's graveyard and remove it from the game. So you get this uh, counter to a lot of decks where you can like remove specific, like, okay, so any deck that does anything from Grave, right? So like uh, Abyss Summon, you can get rid of their targets. Um, Alice, you can get rid of their salvage targets, or you can get, or you can get rid of, you know, generic uh, things that revive themselves, like Shiden or uh, Captain Zomb or Captain Liberty, or uh, Captain Captain Zombie. Is it Captain Zombie cell? Right, you can get rid of all these targets. Um, you can get rid of a uh, potentially in Genesis Summon as well, because they now have ways to return those things to deck, so you can get rid of those as well. Um, like, yeah, I just think this is this is good. Uh, you can banish counters if you want to play around um, cards that 
count number of counters in drop zone. Um, like, yeah, I just I just think this is a very solid card. Like, the the effect is uh, less uh, consequential, uh, I think, compared to the fact that it's a two-strike level zero, uh, and having that kind of damage output is really, really good. Um, yeah, just a great card. Probably going to be like a four of, realistically. Uh, next, oh, baby. He's here, and he is good. Gashadoko Revised Hellbreaker. This is a level four. You imagine front unit, supernatural, willpower, and robotic. The military shit can get out of here. We are here for the robotic stuff, and this is what that deck needed. Discount, you may DR four, or put one card from your hand on the bottom of your deck to instead pay a cost of two, so obviously making it playable and everything else. Um, TD and OD, add the top two cards of your deck underneath this is a charge, and it has charge shield. Note, on a three HP body, so it is that much more annoying to get rid of. It functionally has nine HP, um, but like better. Uh, and when this attacks the centre column, you may choose one unit in a defence zone. That unit loses all abilities, destroy it. So, <laughs> just to clarify, <laughs> they literally went, okay, here's this really cool new mechanic called Gear Up. It's like super strong, it's like super good, it's super great. And we're like, cool, 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 we get it, we get it, we get it, cool, 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 that looks really good. Uh, and then the <laughs> they went, by the way, here's the hardest counter ever. Also, deals with the major threats that have existed before this, like Scoob or like Sentinel Summoners. Uh, actually, I think the one thing, so this will trigger before you could... Like, you can Sentinel Summon after this would trigger, so you can dodge it via that, um, but that was kind of something you would have been able to do anyway. Like, then you want to play the old one for that um, breakthrough, uh, and that, that's just balancing. Uh, but yeah, like, this is... I think this is super good. The artwork is just... Mm, so good. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a massive fan of this card. I think this is super good. Um, you imagine front, I think, like... I wasn't so hot on it, but after reading all of these Dragon Leaf cards and reading these robotic cards in particular and some of the supernatural stuff as well, I, I think I think Red is gonna be doing just fine. Uh next we've got Catharsis Tempest. Uh this is a superhero and a magic level one event. Uh you can set this if set, <laughs> count the conditions. If during this turn you destroy three or more enemy units, you have two or less life, you are geared up, at the end of the attack phase you can play it. To what? Burn two. <laughs> Fucking sick, bro. Like <laughs> There's there's already a burn two that exists in Wonderverse and it's called um it's like the one that's like there and back so you burn two and then you take two, uh but like I, you know this is so hard to get off that it's like I'll take the risk like I'm probably winning like I'm going for the kill I'll have lost anyway if I'm if it's coming down to that, um yeah I'm I don't think this card is any good. Penultimately. I have I've got the power. This is a this is a map card. Okay, so firstly, right, this is a level two tactics technology event. Okay, so first thing to note is robotics will be able to set this directly from deck in OD. So keep that in the back of your mind with every low cost technology tactics event. Anything that's not level three. Okay, standard action. Choose one of the following. Look at the top three cards of your deck. You may choose a robotic from among them. Put it in uh, into an allied robotic unit's charge, and that unit gains charge shield. And then you put the rest of the model deck. So you're making something big. Uh, and really hard to remove, or special summon uh, a non-legendary superior unit of level two or less from your deck, or gear up <laughs> into uh, a special uh, into a non-legendary superhero unit of level two or less if it has gear up. So it's kind of three options, um, and every single one of those is really good. Uh, and look, robotics it's going to be red pink. You're already going to be playing uh, Arthur, so why not <laughs> just play another gear up <laughs> because you can. Uh, and suddenly this becomes a way more versatile card. You can play like Yamo or something, uh, which is like going to be good in that deck. <laughs> like this is so good in robotics. Uh, obviously in superhero this is also very strong. Um, though I don't, th I don't know that you will ever see this really played in superhero uh, by virtue of the fact that you are. You're, you're choosing Atlas, like you're choosing Atlas for your spells, like let's be real here. So um, that does suck for that, but this is a super good robotic card. Like I think this is very, very, very strong. And finally, Moss Flox, uh, concluding the card reveals for set four, concluding the set and concluding with Waifu Samurais, we have this Warrior Future Folk Dragon Leaf, level two, six, three, two, decent stats. Uh, counter is choose up to two Dragon Leaf cards without counter in your graveyard and put them on the bottom of your deck. So basically get back targets for whatever it is you're trying to do. Uh, and also, allied units, uh, allied regular leaf units ignore effect damage. So you can Sigron into this and level zero, and you're immune to Lucifer and whatever the hell you uh, want to be immune to. So there we go. Oh, my throat hurts. 
that is it for set four. We finally have the entire set. Oh, it feels good. I am genuinely really, really excited. I'm going to be making a video basically running over and giving my first impressions on the set, like day, day zero, basically having just re basically read all the cards and going, right, okay, uh, these all seem good. Uh, so do look forward to that. Look forward to plenty of content about set four as it's finally here. Uh, obviously, unboxing is going to be a while away because it's not uh, till May for us. So that kind of content is going to be restricted, but theory crafting and going over any Japanese stuff will obviously be happening. So please do subscribe to the channel for that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below on all these reveals. Do you think Adriana is going to break the matter? I certainly do. Uh, like the video, please. And I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.